I'm Dave. This is Paul. Hang on. <laughs> there you go. Science. I love it. Hiya. <laughs> I'm not good with technology. And this is Creative Differences Indie House. Paul. Hey David, how are you? I'm, I'm good thanks, I'm, yes, I'm good, I'm good, I'm getting the hang of technology now. <laughs> it's, just... it, it's, it's great fun, it's great fun, fun. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm slowly learning, I've, I've got the, I've got the on off bit sorted and, and I'm learning about pins, Pin, pinning, what? pinning. There's always the, if you've got the on and off sorted, you could always just switch it off and switch it back on again, which is the surest way to fix anything, as I'm sure you know. Switch it off. Yeah. There you go. Um, now you are a podcaster and a YouTuber, and I am, I a, guess, yeah, and an online comic shop owner. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, not. A, I don't own a comic shop as such. Like, it, it, it really is just, it offers a very limited selection. Um, and if I can just explain, my the, the comic shop bit, the web store, is just an offshoot of the comicrush.com, which is a website that's all about comics, graphic novels, uh, comic book movies. Um, and we kind of commentate on that stuff. Uh, and try and provide a positive outlook on comics and the comic book industry. Um, so the web store is just there to help support that. So it's very a limited amount of items. I don't sort of sell everything. You know, I, I go to proper comic shops, proper bricks and mortar stores to get my comics. Support your local um, comic shop. Yes, definitely. I, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, if you're into comics, the, the comic shop shop is the place to, to go. Uh, there's, Certainly, plenty that I use. Gosh, comics is is my kind of favourite, and, and the one that, that so on Ward, handles... Wardour Street, isn't it? Mm, oh, is it mm. or Berwick or something? But uh, Berwick Street now. Berwick yes, Street. sorry. That's all right. I was trying to think from from all the years they used to be opposite <laughs> the British Museum, and now they're not. No. Um, not yeah, but they they do my monthly standing order, and and uh, yeah, they're wonderful guys, and yeah. Depending on what part of the country you're in, I can certainly recommend a good comic store. Yes, so, uh, Travelling Man. The, the Travelling Man, north, yeah. My... And my local one is Something for the Geek End, which is in uh, Stockton. I love that title. I it's love good. that title. Um, you should get them to send me their details so I can put them on the uh, list of, of comic shops that's oh, on no. the Comic Crush site. Yeah. Um, that would be great. I'm, I'm making a note now, Paul. <laughs> technology isn't quite as superior as a pen and paper indeed indeed you can uh, get a lot more done with a bit of paper and a lot quicker uh, so <laughs> the um just uh you you review comics don't you on uh, the podcast and things. yeah i mean I, I try to my my goal with the comic crush was to try and talk about comics in the way that people talk about films um, which, you know, can be a good thing or a bad thing, but um, it, to try and, and look really into the uh, emotion and ideas behind the, the stories. I mean, that, that's what I try and go for. I'm not sure it always comes across, um, but I, I, I hope it does. And then beyond that, we do a bit of commentating on, on all the kind of usual pop culture stuff that's out there surrounding comics and comic book films. The thing is, comics... People um, like to uh, belittle comics a little bit, you know, the, uh, comics. But essentially, there's not a lot of difference between a comic and a film. Um, in that when you're making a film, yeah. you do a storyboard, which is essentially a comic. And the pictures are... A film is made up of pictures, isn't it? They're just passing by at a quicker rate. Yeah, I think comics do. Okay, I, I think there's a difference, and that's not to 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 sort of dismantle your no 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 it's about conversation. Um, I, I think the difference is what comics do 
is gives you the illusion of movement in static images mm. and moments via the dialogue and the the you know the, the way the images are drawn um but they rely on your imagination to do that yeah. in, in a lot of the same way that books do um however i think films are a mechanical illusion right um, and that's not to take away from the artistic merits of either medium. Uh-huh. Um, and, I, and I do want to point out for people that comics are a medium. They're not a genre. The comic, a comic book is the medium by which the, the idea uh, is delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, just as film is a medium by, by which the idea is delivered. Yeah. Um, sorry to be... I, I know no, it sounds no, snobby. No, bit, no, no, no. You know, no. But, Mate, geek out. Go for it. That's what it's about. Have you read? Um, are you, it's it's a comic, but it's it's like a, a textbook in the form of a comic. It's by um, Scott McCloud, yeah, and it's I, called yeah. Understanding Comics. Indeed, I read it a long time ago. I, I, I've got, in fact, I can just see on my shelf up here. There's a copy sitting there. Um, I need to go back and reread it actually, because I, I think you're always looking for yeah. a, a refresher on on the. Th- things well, that, I, that I got the, make the medium tick yeah go i got on, the go two the two the two follow-ups as well um creating which comics. i've never read i'm halfway through creating comics and there's mm-hmm. another one which i've got over there i haven't even started it yet um it's, i can't remember what it's called but something like updating comics or something like that um Burning comics <laughs> The thing, the thing with creating comics is what I've the, the the thing I took away from it. And I'm going to review it on my other show. Um, yeah. Much review about nothing coming soon. Um, the thing I love about that book, it explains to you why some people love comics and some people absolutely hate them. And what it says yeah. is, the more you read comics, your brain rewires to fill in the gaps. So totally. instead of seeing where someone who doesn't read comics, they just look at it. They just see a series of pictures and words. Whereas mm-hmm. someone who reads comics a lot, th- their brain fills in the gap. So to go from one panel, which is like this, and another panel, which is like that, and the other guy flying across the room, your brain mm-hmm. fills in that gap. So you see the punch. You see the guy fly across the room. You don't, you know, I don't know about you, but when I read comics, I, I do voices <laughs> in my head and accents in sure. my head. And I, I think I probably... I literally go, instead of, a, instead of a, like, when someone throws a punch, instead of reading, like, biff, boff, I'm like, you know. <laughs> I, like, I, I think we all do it. I think with, with terms of, like, voices, hearing voices, um, I'm, I'm quite often surprised to find out sort of later in the, in the process that some of the characters who I thought might be, I, I don't know, um, I think I had it recently where I thought a character was supposed Irish to be. Scots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, it was the New Mutants. Right. Um, so it was a character I'd always read as... X Factor, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, New Mutants, the movie, I, oh, right, we were okay. discussing at the time, I believe it was. It was myself and my my co-host for that show, Nick, Nicky. And, uh, yeah, like I, I genuinely thought, and, and someone wrote in and very kindly kind of corrected me on it, which I, I was really pleased kindly. about. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, was it I, nice? I, I, it was genuinely yes. nice. Okay. One, one, the tone of the thing they they sent was very nice. They did say, "Oh, you've got to get a uh, an X Men expert on your show," uh, which I, I I will say I'm not. No, but um, I I like people writing in and, and saying, "Oh, well, this this or this," because. It, you know, for every comic I've read, there's another four that I haven't. Yeah, and it's, and... it's a community thing, isn't it? We we all learn from yes, each other. Totally. And yeah, that's the that's the beauty about comics. When you know, mm-hmm. you, when you when you have a group of people who are into comics, you'll be hard pressed to find anywhere more passionate about something with more can, more can... passion being thrown around. <laughs> mm. Can I just point out in in the in the spirit of correcting people, my name is not Stephanie Barlog, as it says on the uh, corner there that's <laughs> my girlfriend's name and, and this is her compu- old computer that i'm using so, <laughs> for some reason why haven't you changed uh, it I, I i probably just didn't have the time or the way we to figure it out <laughs> much like yourself technology is a uh, a foreign language yeah, for me I, so, I, don't, uh, I don't 
don't understand technology. At, at work, we've got these PDAs at my, one of my day jobs. It's PDAs mm. to, to scan parcels and things when you deliver them. Half the time, they don't work. You know, it's like you yeah. scan, 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 scan. It don't work until you end up right in the, punching the thing into the, into the thing, the code, into the PDA, instead of just writing it on a bit of paper with a pen. It's so much quicker just to write a, an eight-digit number than to... Oh. I was telling my, you know, we had the, the recent uh, um, census yes. in the UK. So I was telling my girlfriend, Stephanie Bartlog, um, that I... <laughs> the Stephanie ago, Bartlog. The Stephanie Bartlog. Um, quite a few years ago, I, I was a census taker when okay. they did, not the last census, but I think the one before that. Right. So late 90s, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, it was following on from a sort of property boom where a lot of old houses had been split up into flats. And uh, I therefore had to manually input, manually write in pen and paper, all these new addresses. <laughs> wow. And it took weeks, like it took bloody ages. It was such hard work. Uh, or, 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 you know, repetitive, not necessarily yeah. hard, but repetitive. I mean, how does um, it like... So, yeah. It would be it would be annoying enough if the if the street name was already there and you just had to put the number, but to have to write no, the was, whole thing. Yeah, because you were dealing it, with you know, oh, this house of four bedrooms is now a house of three flats. <laughs> and, um, that's so, that's horrendous. How long were you, you know, there for? Uh, oh God, it took it took it took weeks. I got told They're off still for taking too it. long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As that census will be in, in another 10 years. Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> um, um, so how did you get started in the whole, I'm going to call it online broadcasting for, for the sake of simplicity. Yeah. Um, trying to think now. So I had a job at a comic shop that it is kind of still there, but not in its original form, uh, called All Bottle Comics. Uh, which I started at about four or five years ago, maybe okay. even six years ago now. Um, and there were opportunities to kind of do podcasting there. So I, again, against my better judgment, <laughs> decided to give it a go. And I partnered up with my very good friend, uh, Liz Jordan, who is an, an absolute expert when it comes to things like modern Marvel comics uh, she really knows her stuff. And, yeah. and also, it's, it's just a big geek like me. I mean, we we, we would geek out. You'd be, before I even started working at all, we would hang out sometimes and and we would geek out over stuff. And, um, yeah, just a very kind of talented, uh, intelligent kind of commentator on, on comics. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really loves the medium as well. Yeah. And really loves all the movies and TV shows. So we started doing a, a film podcast a comic book film podcast um and then we kind of took over the comics podcast and then we kind of expanded that into interviews and things um and then yeah once once all but all kind of finished or our our sort of time at all but all finished oh. comic crush but yeah I've I've kind of progressed it forward for myself in terms of podcasts to now video, which took to me a long time to get uh, comfortable with. But one day, I, I think like yourself, I, I just found that I had to just do it. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Good or bad, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it I mean, it's out, done. It out. It's out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Yeah. Once it's out there, that's it. You you know, it's all over. Yeah. You, you don't need to worry about it yeah, anymore. You can relax then. Um, how, so, um, how, how long have you been doing it now? About the, the comic crush uh, or well, just no, online broadcasting? So, oh, uh, not that long, three or four years, I would say. Okay. So I, I, I did it after my, so in my sort of second year at all, but I think I, I really started doing that stuff. And then by, I think we started, no, actually we started in 2016, 2017. When was, when was Dr. Strange out? That movie. Um, 2016. I want to say I, I, I want to say 2016. Um, right, but I, so that's, I, I can't, that's where we started. So five years. Okay, that's cool. And yeah. obviously, with it being 
from a uh, a comic shop, it was always going to be comics influenced. Mm, definitely, definitely. Although I, I have to say, when I came out of of all but all, and I knew I wanted to start my own thing, uh, it wasn't going to be comics. Okay, it was going it was going to be film and. I can't remember what stopped me. I think at the time I, I had a lot of comics just sitting there unread and uh, a lot of contacts in terms of comic creators. And I just thought, um, you know, maybe maybe it might be best to sort of talk about something I am, you know, equally passionate about, which is comics, yeah. and do that. So that's how it ended up. So it was, it was an entirely kind of arbitrary choice in a way. Uh-huh. Um, the, um, and that's not go on, go on. Uh, well it's not to denigrate you know either medium but just to kind of say it, it could have been film yeah well, uh, I still want to do film at one one stage or another but uh, that might wait a year or two more well let's see what happens there's, there's not a lot coming out I mean the, the, the film industry is I don't really understand what's going on at the moment because a lot of films have been held back for obvious reasons from the cinema yeah other films have been released on certain streaming channels. Mm-hmm. I don't know what... It, it just seems... Are there, is the cinema in decline, do you think? Are we going to see films mm-hmm. shift to the TV? I, I don't know. I don't know. This is something... I, I've been meaning to write an article about this for, for the Comic Crush for, for ages, but um, and I, I haven't done it yet because I, I'm... I'm unsure of what I want the answer to be. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I think there's a lot to be said for the cinema experience. Yeah. Um, especially when you're dealing with things like IMAX and the large screen performance. I'm not a big fan of 3D, it has to be said. Yeah, no. But I, no, love, absolutely. I love big, big format. If I can just film. say, if you're going to watch a film in 3D... I would say you've got to watch it at an IMAX cinema because yes. I've seen I've seen I, I used to work at the Trocadero uh, for a company who owned the Pepsi Max IMAX the Pepsi IMAX as it was back mm. then. Um, this was in about 1998 sort of time. Yes, that, that's going back. I remember <laughs> it, that. It <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> and as a, as a treat, we all got taken to the IMAX for to watch mm. a film, and the film was crap. It was about. A, uh, the, the story was that a girl was in the museum, it got closed, and um, she, uh, a dinosaur came to life. The film, the story itself, it, it was really just to show off the, the 3D the format. effect. And that 3D effect was the most incredible thing. I've, it was just so good. The only <laughs> downside was you had like a headset with great big glasses on and earphones built into it and... Stuff like that. I don't know if they they still have that. I'm assuming technology technology has evolved in the past uh, twenty years. No, uh, it's the same. Um, it? <laughs> I, IMAX 3D. I mean, the glasses are bigger, right? Uh, because they have to be because you need a, a bigger viewing area. Um, but they're very comfortable now. Okay. Um, it's weird when, when you used to go to the BFI IMAX up to a couple of years ago. You yeah. used to get these really huge bug eye ones. Okay. That were uh, uh, fantastic. Um, and the cinema I worked in that had three D IMAX, which was the what became the Cine World in Leicester Square, but when I worked there it was the, the Empire in Leicester Square. They had the newer type. Right. And the digital IMAX production. Um I think it's a fantastic format. I, I look I, I just don't know with cinema man. I, um I find the actual experience of going to the cinema fraught with anxiety these days not mm-hmm. not because of covid but just because it's an effort of, yeah well one i mean depending on what cinema you're at and i'm not talking about cinema chains but just the the Particular, location itself yeah. yeah um the projection might not always be good mm-hmm. you know i i find there's far too many lights on now yes and yes. things there's uh, I, and i love sorry I, I love views. I If I get a choice of a cinema, mm. I go to a view. There was okay. an, another cinema I went to. Um, I won't say where, who, it was part of a chain. Yeah. We went to see Black Panther and they left half the lights on. 
did not mm. make sense. And also, the screen was slightly unfocused. Yeah, you know, the, the the picture, and it's, it it spoils spoils the experience. Yeah, to, you know? absolutely. Um, I, I I think that's the problem. And also now, sadly, we make it a bad experience. Like the customer makes it a bad experience because we're so intent on not being off our phones for you know two hours that uh, this... we've got all that nonsense going on. Yeah, yeah. And that drives me up the wall. I don't understand. I, I'm really confused because, yes, I hate when you're watching a film and you see a little light out the corner of your eye. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the other but... thing, the other thing is, they, were, they always used to say, turn your phones off. Somebody, that, when Orange used to do the adverts, they were very funny. But they were always about turn your phone off. Mm. Now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they have that advert. And then about three adverts later, they have enter this code on your phone for a chance to win free yeah, popcorn. So, sure. So what? what so why, why tell people to turn the phone off and then tell them to turn it on again when the film's about to start? I don't understand, I, Paul. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, a lot of it is maybe we're just not equated enough with the modern age. We're maybe, antiquated. Maybe just, yeah, antiquated. <laughs> that, definitely, that's it. But maybe the experience is changing and it's just changing in a way we don't like. I think, of course, there is a future for cinema. Um, I, But if I can have a more controlled, comfortable experience at home, sometimes I would rather have that. And I, I think one thing that COVID made me think is, is this experience over now? Mm. I hope it's not. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, when it's... Black Widow comes out in July, I, I won't be going to a cinema to see it, unfortunately. I'll be watching it here. Right. Um, so, yeah, because I, that's, I think, that's I think... easier for me. No, that's fair enough. But I think some films you've got to see at the cinema. Um, to get the most from. I went to see Greatest Showman and I adore that film so much. Right. It's got the best opening sequence of any film I've ever seen in my I'm, life. I've not seen it, but I've certainly heard good things. You've got... it's it's the, Just just watch the opening sequence. It's just so good. Um, but yeah, that the whole, it's a fantastic film. Watch the whole film, Paul. Watch the whole thing. Um, I'll give it a go. Great go. I got it on DVD as soon as it came out, or Blu-ray. And I watched it at home. And I still loved it. But it wasn't the same. It wasn't as epic, you know. It just seemed weird. Yeah, it may have been because I was watching I... it with other people who like to talk, you know. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think there is that. I I hate going to the cinema with people who like to talk. I just think you know. There's the, there's the thing in front of you. Yeah. And, and actually, when you're watching a film, I'm not being funny, this is so rude, I know, but and, and arrogant, but the only opinions I'm interested in are mine and the films. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, Discuss yeah. it afterwards when you've seen the whole thing and you've, yeah. got, you've got something to, you know, to, some context, you know? That, there's no need for a running commentary. And also, what did he say? What did he... If you listen, you'll know. Because while what, so what did he say? And while you're telling them what they said, what did he say? It's like, well, I don't know. I'm telling you what he said. Drives me. I, this is why I watch films on my own now. I just it's easier. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah, much um, easier. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I think I'll certainly miss having that that kind of first day comic book movie experience. Mm. Um, because obviously now, in in terms of critiquing or reviewing if you want to call it that i that that is that is it's good that you see it as early as possible as soon as possible well these you, days i mean you need to see it sooner than that really don't you because the spoilers are out so yeah if a film comes out in america before it comes out in the uk i'm quite good at avoiding those though i've, yeah. I've become quite quite deft at, uh... do you also avoid all trailers no you watch the trailers, like trailers. Oh yeah. no, I, I avoid it. So sometimes I, I won't watch all the trailers. Right. Um, but yes, I, I like trailers. See, I found that. I, I like to get excited. Oh, I, I get excited. But I find that the trailers these days are, you know, in the 80s and the 90s, mm. it was like um, 
this is happening and this is happening and and very often they shoot stuff for the trailers that's not in the film to to just to you know energize and mm. get people interested whereas these days trailers seem to be basically the key moments of the films and you know just without the filler it's like they they literally tell you the beginning middle and end you yeah. know there've been trailers i've watched when i used to watch them and they'll go and see the film, and I've learnt nothing from the film that I didn't already learn from the trailer. Sure. That's, that, I mean, that's a problem. In, in that respect, I'm always glad that comics don't really come with a lot of trailers. You can get trailers for comics, obviously, but they don't They don't give away that sort of information. They're not there yet, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess it's that thing of uh, how much do you really want to know? Nothing. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to know anything. I I, okay. Yeah, I I, I, I... I find I need to know a little bit. Um, yes. And... I, but not too much, because I, I can usually tell <laughs> within a few minutes if this is going to be the film for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> really, what you need to know is yourself and your own uh, tastes, I find. Well, case in point, right? Um, Civil War. Movie? You remember Civil War, the Marvel film? Yeah. How yeah. amazing would that Spider-Man reveal have been if you didn't know it was coming, if it wasn't in the trailer? Um, when he webs uh, Captain America's yes. shield. Yes and no. However, I think that the most exciting reveals of that film had, had nothing to do with which characters were going to turn up in the film. Really? To be honest with you, yeah. So, I, I think the more I watch that film, the more I realise that its strength is all in the storyline. Oh, the, the storyline is fantastic. But... Uh, and, and I will say, initially, a film that I didn't like. Really? Yes. Not, not that I didn't like, but I, that I didn't like as much as, say, Winter Soldier. But um, Okay. It, as I've watched it again and again, I've kind of gone, oh, actually, no, I, I think this is actually a, a much better film than I initially gave it, gave it credit for. So, well, maybe... I can't remember if we reviewed that one or not, but... Um, <laughs> you might have to revisit that to. one. Um, yeah, I... I'm sure Liz will be up for that. <laughs> I, it might be just because I'm a Spidey fan then, because he, you know, he's my, my sure. number one. But I, when, I, when I saw the trailer, I was very excited. And when I... Because, you know, that was when I used to, you know... But when I went to see the film and I saw the whole thing and, the, and he just came out of nowhere. There was no mention of Spider-Man before that. He just web caps shield, camera pans up, Spider-Man's there. For me, I would have wet myself at that moment. If I didn't know it was coming, I'd have been like, no, especially with Spidey being technically, you know, film-wise, he's a Sony property. So sure, but that would have been huge. The, the moment, the moment... Um... Uh, Tony Stark turns up in Peter Parker's apartment. Surely you know that that's coming anyway. But wasn't so that wasn't that, that, of... wasn't, that wasn't uh, in uh, Civil War? That was in wasn't that in Spider Man? Wasn't that in no? That, that was in uh, that was in Civil War. Before before, yeah, before there wasn't the a flashback. Yeah. I no. don't remember that. I, I, I just remember. No, I just I thought I thought the first time we see Peter. Uh, the, you, you, I, I, I will stake my my minimal and pointless reputation on it. I, I just watched the film. You're going to make me lose all my geek points. Ago. I can't. I'll have I'll have to watch. I'll have to be watching. Do you know what? I, I have trouble remembering things. I, I I forget stuff all the time. I, I I usually have to have the thing right in front of me to be able to talk about it. And yes. I'm terrible. Um, <laughs> I could have so sworn. I could have sworn that that, you, that 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 whole the whole Peter Parker thing came in Homecoming because it it was out of sync with the uh, the Civil War. I could have sworn you, that. You, you know that that's an interesting interesting thing to bring up though because someone was 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 talking about. I think it was uh, Rich, uh, a comics writer called Rich Dueck. Um, who's a t terrific uh, comics writer who wrote uh, an amazing series called Road of Bones for IDW and then reteamed with the artist Alex Cormack again 
to do uh, another one which is running currently called Sea of Sorrows. And he, he wrote a tweet where he said about One Division, you know, all the the noise around One Division um, just serves to remind me that you watch the f- you watch the show in your head more than you watch the one on the screen, and and that's very true, and that's very true, and I and I, I you know I, I fully accept that I'm part of that. That's that's um, that's really deep. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, it, it says something for the way we watch and view our our popular culture these days. Absolutely. One, I think we give it an awful lot of importance, maybe too much mm-hmm. sometimes. Um, and two, I, I do think the whole thing of fandom influencing um, the storylines and things like that uh, and what films get made is possibly getting out of control. Okay. And I I genuinely think that as a viewer, and I, I accept this as a as a comics reader, as a as a viewer of films, for myself, you do not know what you want until you get it. Yeah. That's fair. And all this and you can say I think you can say afterwards, oh that's not what I wanted. But it's like, did you really want that? Like did you is that really really what you wanted? <laughs> like really deep down. Because I, I don't think we know what we want. Yeah, no, the, the, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can make we can make guesses, and people can write all the ag- algorithms they want to try and figure out what you want. Netflix can I can, t- uh, I can t- uh, t- data mine you to buggery, and um, but I, I think largely we, we can say, oh yeah, I want this, this, and this. But ultimately, I, I think the only reason we want X is because we're being asked right. a, a kind of random, not random, but a, a kind of very specific set of questions. And, you know, you should always listen to the way questions are phrased mm. sometimes and, and just think about, are you really being offered a choice here or are you being basically told what you want? Yeah. I think political polls are, yeah. are very <laughs> interesting for that. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, but we won't go there. We won't go there. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> no, I'm, I'm... no, it's it's really interesting. I haven't seen any of One Division yet because um, oh, it's I don't, excellent. I don't have uh, Disney Plus. We'll come on to all that later, like hmm. in, a, in a little while. Um, yeah, sure. Sorry. Sure. Go for okay, it. Okay. Whatever you want to talk about, mate. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, because there, there's a whole uh, sort of thing that I want to discuss uh, around that. Um, do 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 do. do with, with your uh, podcasts and your your YouTube channel feeds your podcast, yeah. So you you take the yeah. So the it started off as podcasts, and okay. we've now moved over to video, and now it's supposed to go the other way. Um, and the the podcasts and the videos are the same thing, basically. So the same it's the conversation has been had. It's just it's just in the yeah. It's just in the the medium you you would rather have it in. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. So, when when you do the, uh, the the videos and the podcasts, um, you you got several different things, haven't you? You um, you review comics, you chat with comic creators, mm-hmm. um, you uh, you just have general geek outs like the stuff that you mentioned with Liz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of all of the the different types of uh, thing that you do, which which do you enjoy the most? Oh, I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I enjoy it all, really. Um, I, I've got to say, the interviews with creators are more fraught with anxiety for me. <laughs> you're dealing uh, with people you don't know most right. of the time, and you don't know how they're going to react to the questions. Even, even yeah. though the, I, I find, you know, my line of questioning is quite benign. It is just getting them to talk about something they they like doing. Mm. I hope and how they did it. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy doing stuff with Liz. I, I, I love doing that stuff um, because Liz and I spark particularly well off each other in terms of of conversation. And we, we have this sort of, uh, I, I don't know, battling. There's a, there's a picture somewhere of me and Liz both wearing boxing gloves. <laughs> and, and that kind of sums us up. You're a DC, well. aren't you? 
I'm very DC, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I like all, all types of comics from everywhere. From no, every absolutely. Bunch, but, I mean, you're, but I, I, you're I, in given the, DC the choice, camp. I will read DC, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I enjoy it all, mate. I, I love doing the stuff with Gemma, which is the, the kind of quasi comics review show. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's very relaxed and we use the comics to then broaden the discussion to other things. Uh-huh. Um, Dogs. Just about life. Dogs, <laughs> especially. But yeah, just about life and how we treat people and, yeah. and stuff like that. And I hope that comes across and, and people are kind of vibing with that. They seem to be. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's no... I wouldn't say there's a particular kind of favourite Okay. Um, it's a nice because, variety. Yeah, I, I think they f- all fulfil a different function, and I, I think as we go on, the YouTube fa- channel is very young; it's only been going since, since January. But as we go on, I think perhaps the differences between the shows will become more clearly defined. Um, but yeah, no particular favourite. Okay. Um, um, like Liz, I obviously love, love, love working with because we've we've been doing it so long now, yeah. on and off. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm really attuned to her particular taste, I think, and her to mine. Uh-huh. And, um, but yeah, no, no particular favorite version of show. It, it, I tell you what, mate, it, it all depends on what, what's up that week. Right. Right. You know, I, I think I, I don't enjoy There might be individual episodes I don't enjoy doing, but that's usually because I felt I was not good in that episode like I, I wasn't hitting the points i wanted to hit mm-hmm. or you, you know my intros or outros but oh, it'll be stupid little things that <laughs> then that then i widen into yeah, yeah. In your head. And, <laughs> do, you, do you ever um when you do your reviews do you ever get a comic co- do you choose your comics that you're going to or do, uh, do, do you ever yeah send sure. comics so, and you're like so i don't want to read this no I, I never say I don't want to read anything. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, this little brush I keep waving around. <laughs> I cleaned the computer earlier. I cleaned the computer earlier, so it's like the little brush for. <laughs> so I'm going to stop doing that. I always, I need props. You need, you need um, a mask. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I no, I, I never say I don't want to read something. You very rarely. Okay, so with the single comics which I kind of have slowed down on reviewing, but just because I slowed down on buying single comics right. and I'm, I'm not very good at managing my time at the moment. So I, I, I'm, I'm kind of all over the shop. Um, and obviously what I should do is go up every Wednesday, get my comics, put aside a block of time, read those. Mm. And from that pick what I want to talk about, right. because that, and that's why I don't feel their reviews because we don't necessarily do them straight on. I usually wait. So if I buy issue one of something, I will wait until near when issue two is out and I will discuss how I felt about issue one. Okay. We only do, we're not really reviews in the sense that reviews are criticism and you can have negative reviews, positive reviews, because we only do stuff we're positive about and things we liked. Because my goal always is get you interested in a comment that you weren't interested in before. Yeah go to your local comic shop or phone them up or, or hit them up online and you buy that comic. That, yeah. That's my goal, which you can say, oh, it's a, a commercial goal, but it isn't. What, what it is, is I, I want to introduce you to a piece of art that you didn't necessarily Absolutely. The, um, that, think about getting before. Was it uh, the, the, the comics I bought from you uh, before, the, the, the actual single issue ones, uh, Valley Falls or something like that? About the, uh, the woman Ruby who... Falls. Ruby Falls. Ruby Falls. I would, yeah, I, if I saw that in the shop, I would not. I wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't have picked that up because I'd have sure. thought is. But you know, you you said you know, give it a go, and I enjoyed it. Mm. It was a really good. You know, I'm, and this I'm is really the thing. Glad. Yeah, and the other one because I'd I'd had a bad experience. I, I'll say it. There was a, a boom. Uh, a graphic novel I got from Boom. I didn't really enjoy it, and I wrongly, I wrongly, well, I had I had two. Uh, trade paperbacks I got from Boom and I didn't enjoy them and I, I okay. wrongly decided I wasn't going to read any more Boom. Um, it, but it's I, a common thing though. Well, I, I bought um, 
the fi- the last contract, the final yeah, contract, which I, I really like, last contract. Yeah, and I loved it. It was really good. It was good. A, it was a nice, gritty, dark story. And yeah, I've I've yeah I've I realised then that I was I shouldn't have been like that with Boom, and I'm now looking forward to reading Berserker. So yes. you know, it's. Um, uh, uh, but uh, like uh, one, I, I'm really proud and pleased to have hopefully introduced you to a couple of new things. And I'm really grateful that you you took a punt on my word. Uh, um, no you know that, that's really nice of you. Um, but also, most importantly, I'm glad you found two things that you enjoyed. Yeah, absolutely. And the good the good thing about those is is they're they're closed loops. They're yeah. um, they're they're one and done stories, which I, I love increasingly. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is the thing. I um I, I love I love my trades. I, I enjoy. Sometimes mm. I just really want to read a single issue, like individual comics. Cause I just I just love sitting there with a a, a mini series. I don't I don't want to read like a, an ongoing thing. If it's a mini series of four issues or six issues or eight issues, with a beginning, a middle, and an end. I, I love that, you know. I love it. Sam and Twitch. I love Sam and Twitch from right, Image yeah. and that. Um, now, th- with trades, what I tend to do is I I wait until they've completed the thing, or once the comics are finished and they start releasing the trades, I'll start buying the trades because yeah, I know that there's exactly. not going to be any, that there will be a finite number. But I won't start reading them until I've got at least two or three. So that I can, when I finish that one, I can start the next one and then buy the next one because the next one will have come out by then. Because I've fallen right. into the trap. There was a series called Black Science from Image, which yes. I'm going to review. Have you read it? I know. I, I know. It's Rick Remender and yeah. Matteo Sclera. Yeah. Sclera, I yeah. say. It is um, so good. So good. Right. I I've, was, I've heard good things. Yeah. I, well, I, I read two issues and then I started reading East of West. And then I was reading other things while I was waiting for the third issue to come out. By the time the third issue came out, I've forgotten what's happened in issue two. And issue one was is a long time ago. And I, I'm thinking about East of West. And so I decided then just to stop reading them, collect the set, the whole set. And then when I get time, sit down and just read the lot. Um, I'm going to do the same with East of West. I'm going to collect the whole set of that. Um, I've done it with Sandman. I've got them. I'm just waiting for an opportunity to sit down and just binge. Uh, Preacher, because that was already finished, I was able to buy them as and when. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's the thing with um, with with comics is that when there's a when they go on and on and on, you know, it's nice to to be able to pick something up. You know, I've read once I've read this, I've got everything I need. You know, without having to wait for the next one. Yeah, um, I, I like that too. I like uh, OGNs um, because you get just a complete story. Even if that, that you know, the stories about that character are going to continue, you have a complete story piece. Yeah, yeah. in that um, in that volume, I, I love those. But I'm also a fan of serialized fiction. I do find it hard to keep up with things that like if i know something's going to be about 12 issues i will like trade paperbacks yeah okay. yeah so if i if i know that that like let's say the next tom king thing is supergirl and that's going to be i think that's only going to be five issues i'll probably read that week to week right batman and catwoman i'll, I'll tend to buy and read the first couple right and then i'll um i'll just keep buying it and wait until it's done and then read it. Mm. So, yeah. And also, there's a limited amount of bandwidth you have. If you're doing this stuff regularly, um, getting all the reading done is not a chore. It is a pleasure, but it's yeah. difficult finding the time. You feel you've got to do it. So yeah. you, you, you stop absorbing it because you think, I've got that pile to get through. So you don't yes. really take on what you're reading. Um, again, I had issue with. Um, I mean, I, I'm a Marvel guy. I love Marvel. I'm a cool. Marvel. I, you know, I love it. But with um, Secret Wars, the latest Secret Wars, mm. um, I, I was re- that that came out. I think it was monthly, 
and then the last one was like we'll do it when we get around to it sort of thing it took they added an extra extra issue i think or something yeah like that. that that can happen and, and also i think the problem there with secret wars was they they stopped all the titles in yeah, <laughs> you know in the yeah. marvel output universe yeah. uh while secret wars went on and I, I think that caused a lot of problems however i will say secret wars was a very very good comic um when you when you read it and finished it it, it was a terrific comic I thought. I, i'm um, gonna have to read it again because at the time I, I i waited till i got them all and then i sat down and read it um it may be because in my head i'm a, i'm anti-reboot with comics but i i don't think that was a, a reboot um I, I think it was in continuity and it had very little to do with the original Secret Wars. Oh yeah. I think what what it was. I mean, they used the Beyonders, but they used them very sparingly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I never saw that as a reboot. But uh, didn't and they also, take different parallel universes and end up with them yeah. sort of you know from now in on instead world, of being they, different they universes, the, you're in the same universe. Yeah, they used the base concept, which then gave birth, I think, to the six one six, which is the the, thought, the kind of. I thought it's always been six one six. I, I don't know. I think it may have been named before, but then, uh, sorry, it's the 616 became the universe that you were following. Right. Um, so it's a very, yeah. I so, mean, I, I can't necessarily keep track. I, I just like good stories. No, absolutely. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pursue this. Go on. Go <laughs> what I want to know is, because I, as I say, I just read the trades really. So I, very rarely I, I get I get any single issue comics, but, are the Marvel the Marvel universe now? Is that still the same universe as was formed at the end of Secret Wars, or have they slowly and quietly allowed it all to I, go back to pre Secret Wars? Where's I Liz? <laughs> Get Liz on the phone. <laughs> uh, I think it's the same universe. Okay, okay. I think because I, I, I think Mar- Miles Morales is still. Because that was the big marker for me was was Miles Morales moving from the Ultimate Universe to the the Six One Six Universe. Um, yes, I think it's. Okay. <laughs> I can't tell. I'm not like this is the thing. I, I would find it impossible to keep up with the continuity of the universes all the time. Right. Um, I know DC is now going for another shift, so they're on the the Infinite Frontier stuff. However, I think, first of all, stuff like that allows for some really great stories that otherwise wouldn't be told to be told. Um, and I think it's important for getting new readers on, which I, I, I've got a feeling is why it's largely done. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, I don't always feel that someone will pick up issue 525 of a comic. Right, okay. However, they might p- p- pick up issue one or issue six. But or... what about all of those? You, you say you work at DC. You work on the Superman comic. Uh, I say <laughs> the Superman comic. One of the Superman comics. I think um, there's only two now. I think. Oh, I think only... Yeah, I think it's Superman in action. Wasn't there a, oh, a Man of Steel? Or... There was, but that was only a mini. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it's just Superman in action now. I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you've oh, got... and the stuff spinning out of uh, the most recent event. There's stuff there. Okay. But yeah. So <laughs> sorry. You're working on. <laughs> on a Superman comic, right? <laughs> and you've been working on it for a year, mm. and you're you you're in the middle of this really meaty, fantastic story that you've wanted to do since you were a kid reading Superman comics, and it's selling really well. It's very popular, um, and you're about two thirds of the way through then the um editor-in-chief comes on the on the tannoy because i'm sure they had tannoys at dc and so that's you know and says um <laughs> and what that means is we're rebooting everything starting from scratch um all of your storylines have to be um wound up uh, and ended next issue that's the first side of it. The other side of it is what about the the fans, the readers who have been reading for some time, 
in this they're in this thing and all of a sudden they go to the comic shop from one one week they go there and they get issue you know 329 of this superman comic the next week they go and it's issue one of this superman comic sure um okay so a couple of things there i, I think by and large writers know going in if they're going to be working on the last 10 or 12 issues of that comic ever okay uh, and if there's going to be a universe reboot. Now, I think you can pretty much guarantee there will be a universe reboot of some kind or a large-scale reboot roughly every five years now. Okay. So uh, New 52 lasted from 2011 to around 2016. Right. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Rebirth and the DC Universe, as they call it, um, lasted from 2016 to 2021 so roughly every five years you're so, gonna get what some kind of large-scale reboot so, and, and the reason for that is probably that the audience starts to drop off after five years and also you can't the, the numbers start to go down remember it is a commercial business yeah and you have to have people buying the comics and buying into the ip Otherwise, there ain't no point in in making all the stuff around it. And yes, they might make more money from T-shirts and lunchboxes and films than they do from the comics. But mm. ultimately, I think if the comics went away slowly, the characters would start to erode oh, yeah. in the public consciousness. Because we're dealing with modern mythology and, yeah. you know... Not being funny, but there aren't T-shirts. You don't see people running around in a pair of shorts and a T-shirt that says Homer, do you? No. Odysseus, um, <laughs> Troy. <laughs> no one runs around no, in that stuff. No. So, um, and and why is that? It's because those stories fall from the the wider daily public consciousness, or they evolve into other characters. Such yes, as but Thor. sure, but. Um, I, I can guarantee you that there's probably about half a million of people a day having conversations, active conversation, uh -huh. about where they think Batman should go next. Yeah. No one, or not no one, but there probably aren't anywhere near that number talking about what they feel Odyssey should have done. <laughs> <laughs> You know that Medusa just, girl? Just, yeah, yeah, right. So, and, and yes, those things are talked about because they're part of education, but also yeah. because those things have fallen into... I'm doing it again with that stupid brush. <laughs> because those things have fallen into an educational milieu rather uh -huh. than a popular culture one, yeah. we treat it differently. Mm. I think if Batman was a subject to schools... Probably disappear in a few years. Do you reckon? Because people, people associate him with work. Because they've got yes. they've got to read him instead of yeah, reading sure. out a choice. Although yes, and I'm, I'm perfectly aware you can get doctorates and and, and oh, uh, yeah. uh, there's, there's comics education and studying yeah. that can be done and is done every day. I'm not dismissing any of it, um, but I, I I think and, and also that they're, they're a much wider part, a longer bit of history. The sort of mythological things. But I think these are a kind of modern myth. I, I think there is an argument to be made there. And I, I, I think that if you don't keep the stories alive and keep retelling them, mm. they do start to fade. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. And it's why a lot of folklore has disappeared and, and you know, things like that. I think it starts to disappear from the consciousness. Mm. Um, the, the genetic consciousness, almost, I would say. Yeah. No, that's, I, I just feel that... I mean, you're, you're a DC, you've been reading DC for a long, long time, okay? So how do you feel personally? Does it honestly not bother you when you're you're reading a version of, you know, you're reading a storyline and yeah, you um, know in five years' time, right? Let's say it is every five years. You know that they, they're about to reboot, you know. They haven't announced it yet, but you know it's coming. I find that the reboots are a lot softer these days right. um, for a start. Uh, yeah, it bothers me to a certain extent. The one that really did 
bother me was the transfer from the modern age DC universe to, to the new 52. That okay. annoyed the crap out of me. I, I, I can understand but why. I have to, I have to, to proceed that with. Uh, the reason it annoyed me was I had invested a lot of time from about 2007 to 2011, 2006 to 2011, I'd gone on this sort of mission to find every single Batman comic made from. So what did I do? I, a friend of mine said to me, ah, oh, start picking up this run of detective and Batman because it's Paul Dini or no, James Robinson was writing and it was just post, uh, 52. All right. Uh, and he said, cause in a few months, Grant Morrison is coming on. And he's doing this this thing, and I think they'd even announced Batman R.I.P. Like that, that's where it was going. Okay. I said, oh, that sounds interesting. She loved Grant Morrison, and I think I'd been out of comics for ages. So I I started reading this James Robinson Batman comic. Started reading the Grant Morrison stuff, and was like, you know what? Like I've forgotten how much I love this. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go and get every Batman. <laughs> It's so stupid. Every Batman issue from year one, or I think I picked like the month oh, okay. before year one, right? Um, to now. Okay. Every not not every comic of a title, but every Batman comic. Full so I, I brought. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I ended up with: boxes and boxes of um, Batman, yeah. Detective Comics. Mm -hmm. Every issue. In that period, mm -hmm. so from 1987, I think it was May 87, something like that, right. all the way up to the end of the, the DC Universe in September 2011, whenever it was. Uh, every issue of Legends of Dark Knight, every issue of Gotham Central, every issue of Batman Chronicles, every issue of Batman Confidential, which was a title they launched in between. All that, but every issue of Shadow of the Bat, um, I had a ton of Robin, a ton of Nightwing, a oh, ton you, you of. Went, you went out. for the offshoots as well. I went, yeah, for a lot of the offshoots. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't buy it all, but I went nuts. I wow. went nuts, and I brought a lot. And every mini Batman mini series and and one shot as well during that period. Uh, and a few that were outside of that period. Were they all um, new or second-hand or what? A lot of them, well, yeah, second-hand by then, yeah. back issues. But I mean, um, that, that, were they I, sort of the, the condition? Was, uh, was it all yeah, right? Yeah, it was okay. Like, not bad. I've still got them in boxes and stuff. And... <laughs> now, I, I can tell you that that, that journey, that odyssey, <laughs> finished um, the week before Dark Knight Rises came out. Really? Yeah. So that uh, getting all the back issues up to a certain yeah. point, because then it, you're just getting the forward stuff, uh, and then it finally ended for me when when the new fifty two. But the way I saw it was okay. I've got a complete thing now. I'm mm. I'm happy. Have you read them? Yes. You haven't, have you? Um, <laughs> I've read one. <laughs> no, no, I've read them. I've read okay. them once. I've read a lot of all the Batman stuff. There's a lot of stuff I've since gone on to get after that that uh, is unread. Um, so I'm looking for a way to 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 kind of redo that. There's a guy called Colin Colcher on uh, online who does this thing called the Real Batman Chronology Project, okay. where he puts every single story featuring Batman in a context of a chronology of Bruce Wayne's life. So it's like year one to, to year 23. Oh, it's, yeah. fa it's a fascinating read. And I, I was trying to get that for a while and gave up. And now I'm trying again. It, it's so stupid. Like you, you just get caught up in this stuff. And but you kind of it's kind of a challenge to yourself, mm. really. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I remember when I was working in the comic shop. Sorry to, to just go off no, on this. No, 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 go for it. A guy came in and he went, oh, look, guys, I've just finished getting everything. Like I've been collecting Iron Man for years. I've just finished getting everything I want for Iron Man, and um, I want to move on to another character for now. And I was thinking of doing Batman. I was like, okay, yes, you've come to the right person, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he said, right, great. What can you show me? What have you got? And I said, uh, well, so you've got all these collected books here. There's, you know, there's Year One, there's, which you should definitely start with. There's Long Halloween, Dark Victory, all this kind of stuff. 
And he he went, no, 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 no. I, I want the single issues. And literally, 10 minutes later, I was begging this guy yeah. not to do this. I was saying to him, don't do it. Do not do it. You've got all these books collected. It's all there for you for a fraction of the cost that you would buy a lot of these issues for because some of them go for stupid money. Please, sir, do not do this. And he ignored me. And, and as such, we actually didn't have a lot of the stuff in the store that he wanted because right. it wasn't a lot available, um, you know, because it all depends on what people bring in to sell to the yeah. individual shops, you know. Um, but, yeah. Uh, comic collecting is a form of madness. Do you did you explain to him that the reason you didn't have a lot of it in the shop was because you'd already taken it home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. No, I mean, I, I cleared a lot, of, a lot of the stuff, the bat stuff that all, all got in out. Yeah. Like I, I, I used to to really kind of jump on it when it came in. That's, um, that's... That's bizarre, though, that two of you in such a small, like, it was in the same location. <laughs> no, look, do, you know, do you know, when I did the most, one of the most popular things I ever did at All But All, apart from leaving, was, um, <laughs> uh, was uh, I did a Batman reading list in, in like three parts, like a, quite an extensive reading list. And that got a whole bunch of customers coming in yeah. following that list. And picking up the trades, and uh, nice. yeah, we sold a lot off the back of that. I was quite proud of that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring it back for the comic crush, and we we're going to do a new, very extensive one. So um, uh, yeah, look out for that soon. I will. If, if, if you like that sort of thing, just, just have a pile of comics in front of you. <laughs> That's good because they won't they won't be able to see my face then. They'll love it. Oh, <laughs> just a disembodied, a disembodied voice behind this pile of. Hello. And they slowly come down. <laughs> it's just a hand <laughs> hanging out this pile of books. I've, I've had that before. In fact, the um, the the logo, the current logo, the not very good logo for the Comic Crush, is a pile of comics and my hand reaching out. <laughs> 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 there you go. You're on the money there, David. Yay! Actually, I know things. I know. I know stuff. Good. Cool. So yeah, you're you're right. What? Okay. The DC reboots, right? We're right, still on sorry, this. yeah, to go back to the original. <laughs> what, what? Who decided? Because obviously they went for like fifty years or something without rebooting. So who decided it would be a great idea? Well, go on. There, there are always reboots going on. So I think the first major one was Crisis on Infinite Earths. I love that story. Yeah, it's great. Um, Usually they're done for editorial reasons to streamline mm -hmm. the number of characters and the number of stories. Um, and I think Crisis was done specifically to fold in all the different events right. that they'd had going on um, yeah. and, and to offer DC a chance to, to kind of restart without actually having to retell. But and, and following Crisis, you had Batman Year One, you had George Perez moving to Wonder Woman, okay. where I think he was both writing and drawing at the time. Um, you had um, John Byrne on Man of Steel, which I, I still think is a great origin for, for Superman. Right. Um, and, and, you know, characters' origins get retold all the time. How this many times is... have you seen a Batman origin? How many times have you seen, like Superman especially, I, I've, I've got a feeling that Superman is probably the most origined character in comics. I would say, I'd say um, Batman, to be honest. No, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I, I could watch a Superman film and watch another telling of the Superman origin mm. much, much more happily than I could sit there through another Batman origin. Sure. But, I mean, I, I think that in terms of comics, how many times have they done Superman? So, Man of Steel, I, I can recall, Man of Steel, uh, Earth One. Um, Action Comics. Action Comics number one. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, yeah. so the original stuff. Um, uh, Superman Birthright, Superman Secret Origin. Um, there's a there's a big book. So, there's a big book, yes. Superman. <laughs> That's it. Superman Year One. They've just done uh, with Frank Miller. Right. Um, Daredevil Frank Miller. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he did. He did one of the first Black Label Batman titles. As well. Yes, Dark Knight Rises, uh, not Dark Knight Rises, Dark Knight Returns, right. uh, and of course that whole universe, yeah. and of course Batman Year One, which I, I still think is one of the greatest stories ever written. Um, yeah, so I mean, Super, Superman, and I, I think a lot of that came from the fact that it, it did feel like if you've got a character who's indestructible, largely, you don't always know what to do with him, so I oh, would we'll just go back and retell the origin mm. again. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's as simple as that, but I think there is an element of that. And I think the other popular thing is to show you characters' endings. Um, to, you know, yeah. you know the, the imagined ending. Um, I sort of so... like the idea of, with comics, if you, like Dennis the Menace. I don't want Dennis the Menace to grow up, you know? I don't, I don't yeah. think, you know, I don't think there should necessarily be an ending. They, these things should... They're, 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 as you say, a sure. modern myth. They they should go on. They should perpetuate forever. Uh, but I think the end is something, and obviously this for, for reasons that you, you know, this is something I'm, I'm thinking about quite a lot this uh -huh. week. Um, the end is something we all face. It is. And I think it's important in fiction to address that. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Do you want to see a teenage Dennis the Menace? Might be interesting, depending on who's doing it and how it's done. Frank you Miller, know. Dennis the Menace. I would see that, <laughs> but I don't think I don't think anyone else. Um, no. it, it is a thing. What, what I'm trying to say about endings and beginnings is this. I think people have a very easy time with endings and beginnings. I think what they don't have an easy time with is the middle. Yeah, um, and people people believe falsely that the middle doesn't contain interesting stories because Ooh. it's not the major turn of events. However, I think that's bull. Uh -huh. I think that sometimes the most interesting things happen in the middle. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think things like one of my favourite DC trades. Or it might be a graphic novel. You'll have to correct me on this because I don't know if it came out as comics. Uh, Kingdom Come. Uh, it did come out as comics. It did. Uh, so it is a trade. trade. Uh, I think it's perfectly acceptable to call them graphic novel. <laughs> yeah, four, yeah, four prestige format issues. In fact, in this year, Kingdom Come is 30 years old, I believe. Really? Wow. Yeah. See, what I love about that is that you're led to believe is that the, it, it's the, our, our mainstream characters. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Mm. It's a DC comic, obviously. They're all retired, so they're all finished, you know. Um, and it's the next generation of superheroes and supervillains who are, mm. you know, trying to. But they, rather than carrying the mantles, they just don't seem to care very much. So the the old heroes have to come out of retirement. Go on. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just thinking of... So the, I, I just remember... I, 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 the image I remember is Superman on, a, um, on his farm sorting out the roof on his cottage yeah. in his dungarees. <laughs> and Wonder Woman saying, you've got to come back, you've got to come back. And then, mm. obviously, Batman, by now, Bruce Wayne's in a wheelchair. Um, I won't explain too much because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it, but it's yeah, well so, worth reading. So, so basically, Kid Come is the sons and daughters of... of... The, the, the superhero yeah. community yeah. wreaking havoc on the world. Um, probably because they lack the moral context that yeah. the original heroes had. Because they keep getting rebooted. Think, they don't know what to believe. Uh, well, I think there's something to be said for the fact that your children will one day eat you, you know? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, like the, the, the things we create now will, will come back to us and, and kind of eat us mm -hmm. and i think your children will 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 kill you eventually um sometimes that's a benign thing it's willing and it's consensual and sometimes it's not i i, I think that um there's there's plenty of good fiction in that vein and there's plenty of to be mined yet in that vein i don't mind being told the same story again and again but in different ways i really don't i think it's a comfort really 
Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> bless you. <coughs> Thank you. Bless you, sir. I'll just put that um, over there. Save me for later. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, there's also a thirst for news stories and things mm. like that, uh, which I don't mind. But I think we always go back. An interesting thing about comics, someone said this to me once, or someone wrote this, and I I, I kind of picked up on it, and it, I, I, I always use this now when talking to people. You always go back to the comics you first started yeah. getting. Or, or, and for me, it was Batman. Um, for other people, it might be you, you know, Dennis the Menace for you. Um, One day my, you might suddenly first, find yourself... My first proper comics I, I ever read were Beano. Um, my introduction, yeah. though, to, to comic characters as came... Do you remember the video club in the 80s, VHS videos? They, were, they yeah. all seemed to be from the video club. And um, every weekend, mum and dad would rent a film and I would rent a Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd just sit there watching. you get three Spider-Man cartoons on a tape. And that was my introduction to Spider-Man. And um, I'll tell you... I worked my way through every Spider-Man video in that shot in those shops, and Brilliant. I was gutted when I when I'd run out. And my dad said, "Why don't? You, what about this? Look, the Hulk. I don't, I don't want the Hulk. I want Spider-Man. Look, it's Thor. Yeah, I want. I was, anyway, I took a Hulk one home because that was all. Yeah, you know. and then uh, it turns out on the Hulk ones you get two Hulk cartoons and a bonus Spider-Man cartoon. So I ended up working my way through all." other marvel videos just so that i can watch these other Fantastic. these bonus spider-mans but um and with superman it was obviously christopher reeves uh that was my introduction yeah. to superman but yeah, comics wise um the first proper comics i i ever read were, were beanos um the, the first comic i actually owned was a spider-man comic i just never read it <laughs> I remember you saying that to me the other day, yeah, because it wasn't it midway through a series. Yeah, wasn't it? it was a part of the Spider-Man versus Humbug series, and it was issue four, something like right. that, four or I've, six, yeah. or something like that. So I don't know what came before it. I don't know what came after it. I was about seven years old. Do, so... do you know I, I gave up on a lot of the incomplete stuff years ago? I just traded it all in because really? it's just like I'm never going to. I got fed up with trying to find certain things. I think with Gotham Central, for example. Yeah. I lied when I said I had all of it. I had all of it by one issue. And... It was the end. <laughs> no, it was somewhere in the middle. I can't remember what issue it was. Oh. But I got so fed up of not being able to find this bloody issue. And I... Because I, I didn't like buying online at the time. Which is ironic, considering I'm now yeah. on my online web store. <laughs> didn't like buying online at the time. I, I loved that sensation of finding... Oh, yeah, there it is in, in the, the back issue bin. It's very yeah. old school like that. And... Um, eventually I traded it in and just brought the trades. I, I, I got, got the shop to order me one at a time right. over, over a month. I ordered an, uh, a new Gotham Central trade. Oh. <laughs> and, and then you and found now, the I'm one. Going... No, 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 I didn't. I'm now, well, you stopped looking. <laughs> um, I'm now going through the process, a very painful process, actually, of considering getting rid of all the Batman stuff and just getting trades where I was possible. Gonna, I was going to say, wouldn't, wouldn't it be worth a, a, a good amount? As, yeah, you could get in touch with that guy. Some of it is. Get, get in touch with that bloke yeah. who, who went after you at the comic shop. Oh, hey, listen. God, yeah, can you imagine? If only I had his number still. Um, you remember 10 years ago, you asked me if I had yeah. any Batman stuff. <laughs> a funny story. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm, I'm gradually going through that process. I think that will start quite soon. I've, I've held off doing it for so long, but um, mm. yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Space as well, isn't it? So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the beauties about old comics is the the, for the, the smell of an old comic. Yeah. The, the printing uh, process of an old mm -hmm. comic but also the adverts, you know, the, 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 the gym equipment and the, the sweets and, yeah. the, you know, the, the, the new Atari console that's coming out. Incidentally, Atari have got a new console coming out. Just, But the, the new, the, you know, the buy, buy the Nintendo and get it with Duck Hunt now and all this sort of stuff. 
Do you, do you know that, like, when they do the facsimile editions, they do these things called facsimile editions where they reprint key issues, right. and they reprint them exactly, including the advertisements. Really? Yeah. That's, that's uh, amazing. I mean, it's still not, not quite the same, but it, it's, not quite it's same. nice. Because the paper's different as well. It used to be newspaper, didn't do, it? Do you know what? Yes. Do, do you know what? DC have gone a long way to actually... They, the, so the print, the paper they use now is closer to newsprint. And right. is, is very nice. And they started using it in their comics, and then they shifted it to their trades as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So a lot of the trades are now reprinted on, on that paper um, because they just found it held the colours and the inks a lot yeah. better, I believe. But, and, and, and actually, you know, the big decision, the big reason why, why all you know, places yeah. changed their ways because it was cheaper. Um, Absolutely. I was going to say, uh, the newspaper paper doesn't last as long as no, the no. other, you know, it, yeah. So I, I think it's why a lot of people get excited when they find something with white pages still, <laughs> when the book's been kept plain. But seriously, because oh, usually yes. what you'd get, and a lot of mine are sort of a slightly off-white or a yeah. yellow. All of but mine, all of mine are in acid-free plastic <laughs> covers i don't have any here with me they're all over there yeah. but yeah even even you know if i can get a hardback in there even the hardbacks go in you know i don't i don't want i don't want anything getting contaminated by anything else right we lost the signal a bit there david i don't know what, don't know what happened oh i'll, I'll, I'll take care to... of it in the in the edit yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah i mean do you use the plastic I, I, wallets? I do use the plastic wallets, yeah. Although there seems to be a bit of a drought at the moment. You can't get any. So. Um, I use Mylar. Mylar. The, 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 I've got two types. I've got, you know, the ones with the, where you have like the, the plastic wallet and the thing that goes, the, the mm. end that goes over the top. I've got some of them for the, the bigger stuff, but the, the nicer stuff that if it will fit in, I use the Mylar ones, which is more like an acetate. Yeah. Um, it's a thicker plastic. Mm. Um, I mean, they're all acid free as well. So buy your acid free yeah. ones. Don't buy acidic ones because you're, you're better off leaving them out in the in the elements, isn't you? Yeah, there is that thing where you're supposed to re bag and board every every few years to try and keep them. I mean, good luck doing that. <laughs> I, I, like for me, for me, that would mean buying about three or four pounds. <laughs> Wow, and that's just the Batman everything. box. That is actually yes, that is just the Batman. Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. That's just. Nuts. I do it as I go. If I reread them, I'll probably rebag and board it. Okay. Uh, that's that's how I, I do it. Uh, I'd, I'd it it gets very that. nerdy when you start talking about this. I, do, I I mean I think I think keeping them nice is one thing, but to to then. I mean, what do you do with the old ones? Just chuck them out or like recycle them in that? No, I, I obviously I get rid of the bags, although I try and find, you know, bag recycling yeah. um, to put them into. Uh, and the boards I keep for, you know, they go out when I, when I mail out stuff to, to people yeah. from the web store, you, you, you know, so I'll usually tape a couple of. Yeah, yeah, yeah boards yeah. to it for to keep security it security in that yeah so they're good for that or you can draw on them if you want yes, you know, you that way <laughs> that is a tip they're made of paper you know <laughs> yeah um on the flip side though the rougher side i don't find it more useful to to write things on or draw on <laughs> fair news fair news um, um you, know, you, you have to be careful you don't accidentally post one of them to someone with their comic <laughs> well, it depends on the drawing. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sitting there like uh, the kid from Superbad, drawing loads of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's. Um... Well, we we don't know what you draw, Paul. I haven't seen your drawings. <laughs> Have you ever thought I haven't about? I've drawn in years, actually. You should. You should draw. Have you? Um... I'm not. I'm not that good anymore. I used to be good, but I started be. writing instead. Then and uh... try it. You might. You might impress yourself if you're drawing for your writing. You might impress yourself.